You use your muscles every single day. They move the air through your lungs and the blood through your body. They allow you to run, to jump, or to move in any other way and are the only thing keeping gravity from folding you in half. So muscles are what determine how easily and confidently you move through the world during your lifetime. Yet for some reason there's a common misconception that strength training or lifting weights is only for athletes who want to look fitter, get stronger, move faster, or whatever this is. But it simply isn't true. Whether you're 18 or 80, if you have a body that you intend to move, you should be lifting weights. Think about it. More and more we're spending most of our time stationary, sitting in class, in the office, on the couch, or in the car. As a result, our bodies are less mobile and more fragile than ever, and the consequences are likely worse than you think. You've probably heard the phrase, use it or lose it, but do you know how true that actually is? As you age, your entire body begins to atrophy. That means your bones, your muscles, your nerves, and every single cell that you're made of slowly decays along with your ability to move. And the less you stress and challenge every muscle, the quicker they deteriorate and the more physically helpless you become. I'm not just talking about the size of your muscles. I'm literally talking about the strength and muscle power that you lose over time. Studies show clearly that after age 40, you'll lose 1% of muscle size, 4% of strength, and 10% of muscle power every single year. And though you probably don't realize it, this matters most to anyone who's in their 20s and 30s. Because it's during these years that you should be developing muscle mass, which then goes on to build your bone strength and nerve connections that keep you flexible and nimble through life. Your bad posture, your neck pain, your back pain, your knee pain, all that soreness and inflexibility is connected to your muscles and the strength they don't contain. Yet you've probably surrendered to the idea that it's just an unavoidable consequence of aging. I'm dying. But if you watched my video on exercise, you would have learned that it's not. And it's placing all sorts of limitations on your preparedness for life. What if you need to carry your dog, or your friend, or yourself? Strength is the only way to do that. So, if you're done with being slow and physically useless to yourself and everyone around you, then this is what you should know to start lifting weights and building strength. <laughs> Having that confidence knowing, yep, I could pull myself out of that burning car or over that wall or whatever. The ability to save somebody else's life. I'm not saying you have to be a bodybuilder, but God damn it, take care of your f***ing meat vehicle. Okay, let's go. To keep things short, I'm not going to get into the science of slow and fast twitch muscles or how they grow and deteriorate. But if you're interested, there's a great video by the Institute of Human Anatomy that I'll link below. For now, all you need to know is that the only way to sufficiently maintain or improve strength is with progressive overload, constantly challenging the muscles with enough force to affect change over time. Basically, working out causes damage to your muscle fibers and triggers a recovery process that leads to muscle growth and increased strength over time. As your muscles adapt to the weight and stress placed on them, however, the more resistant to damage they become and the harder it is to gain strength and muscle. But you can get around this by simply increasing the force required through more weight, more reps, more sets, or more complexity in the exercise. This is what we call progressive overload and is one of the six modifiable variables that will help you build an optimal strength training program. The other five are exercise choice, intensity, volume, rest, and frequency. Let's talk about exercise choice. When training for strength, you want to choose compound exercises that use different muscle groups as a system instead of isolating each one. For example, bench press, deadlifts, and squats are all compound exercises that use multiple joints and muscle groups to complete the exercise. On the other hand, curls, extensions, and raises are isolation exercises that mainly engage a single muscle group and joint, which is good for hypertrophy, not strength. What we want is to target the six main muscle groups at least twice per week. So that means choosing compound exercises that target your chest, arms, abs, shoulders, back, and legs in at least two sessions every week. To make it easier to remember, I suggest using the three to five method for this entire program. So for this variable, you're gonna choose three to five compound exercises each day that target different movements of push, pull, and rotation in both your upper and lower body. So your first session might be bench press, pull-ups, squats, deadlifts, and wood choppers. Of course, this is just an example. You can alternate upper and lower body exercises per session if that's how you prefer to train. The main thing is that you're hitting all the muscle groups at least twice per week, always ensuring progressive overload. And if you need more exercises, I suggest the Jeff Nippard or AthleanX YouTube channels for science-based training. Next, you'll need to find the optimum weight for each exercise measured as a percentage of your one rep maximum, or your one RM, which is the maximum amount of weight you can move in a single repetition. And the safest way to determine this is using an online calculator. But first, you'll need to perform each chosen exercise with whatever weight feels comfortable and pump out as many reps as you can for a single set. Once you've done that, search online for any 1RM calculator and enter your results. 
From here, you can get an approximate 1RM for each exercise, but more importantly, these percentages. Because the weight you want to aim for is 85% of your 1RM in each exercise. Once you've determined the intensity, you can decide the volume. So how many sets and reps per exercise? Which in the 3 to 5 method is 3 to 5 reps for every set and 3 to 5 sets for every exercise. Where you lie in that 3 to 5 range is completely up to you. You can even change these numbers per exercise or day according to what gets you the greatest gains over time. Where you'll actually find a lot of hidden gains is during rest between sets, which you've probably figured out by now should be anywhere between 3 to 5 minutes. But to me, this wastes way too much time. So here's how to shorten it. In order for muscles to move, they need sufficient oxygen delivered to them. That's why when muscles work too hard or too long, oxygen gets depleted and causes the burn in your muscles. So to lower your rest time, use intentional breathing between sets, which slows your heart rate and in turn delivers more oxygen to your muscles. An easy way to do this is by inhaling through your nose for 3 seconds, then exhaling for 6 and repeating until you begin your next set. And the reason you should breathe through your nose is because it regulates the proper amount of oxygen versus carbon dioxide that you take in. This is important because too much carbon dioxide makes blood too acidic and decreases blood flow, which means less oxygen, less nutrients and more burn for your muscles, the exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve. So breathe steadily, controlled and through your nose, and if done correctly, you'll experience increased muscle endurance as well as better recovery during and after workouts, allowing you to reduce rest periods between sets. You can then multiply these gains and further reduce rest times if you stack that with palm cooling, which is exactly what you think it is cooling the palms of your hands between sets. Without going into too much science, palm cooling by holding a cold water bottle, for example, brings down your core body temperature and massively improves performance. And that brings us to the final modifiable variable, frequency, how many sessions per week. The main focus is that you train consistently. That means no weeks off for as long as you aim to improve strength. Other than that, pick anywhere between three to five weekly sessions. So to quickly recap, you're going to maintain progressive overload as you train 3 to 5 sessions per week where you'll complete 3 to 5 compound exercises of push, pull and rotational movements performed at loads of 85% of your 1RM for 3 to 5 reps per set and 3 to 5 sets per exercise with rest intervals of 3 to 5 minutes where you apply breathing and palm cooling to maximize efficiency and performance. Oh, and one last thing. When training for strength, try to perform the movements as quickly as safely possible. Because speed plus strength gives you muscle power, while slow and focused muscle contractions give you hypertrophy. Of course, you'll get stronger either way. So just know that how you perform these compound exercises will determine how much strength you'll gain versus how much bigger your muscles will grow.